All right, so today is a new day. Uh, as you saw in the last video, the clutch was going out. We could only, it only was engaging at the very bottom. When I, it, it wouldn't even release half the time. So luckily we got it back. I just got it on jack stands and here's the tools we're gonna use to bleed the clutch. Got a hand pump here. Already got some DT, DOT4 brake fluid in it. Got this little uh, siphoner. And this is going to attach so I can go ahead and put it on the slave cylinder for the clutch. Here's the reservoir. And as of now, according to the video I was watching, I need to siphon out the rest of this, this old fluid. I'm going to throw it into a water bottle. And then to get the air out, we go down into the car where the slave cylinder is for the clutch. And using that hand pump, pump up the new fluid that way the air rises like it naturally does so it'll the air will come back up and make some air bubbles in there until this is full again with the new brake fluid and the clutch should engage perfectly after we pump it about 20 or 50 times somewhere around there so i'm going to go ahead and pump the old fluid out eyes in the sky gazing far into the night i raise my to the fire but it's no use cause you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light shine through if you believe it's true baby won't you let the light shine through So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I got this little concoction made. I'm going to go into the car and I'm going to pump some oil out of here till it spews out a little bit. I'm going to go into the car hook this up to the slave cylinder and keep pumping until I see that uh, oil reservoir uh, fill up. So I'm under the car now. I got my little hand pump and here is the slave cylinder. It is right up here. I'm trying to show some light on it. That's connected to the transmission and this hose part right up here is where I'm going to be hooking up the hose and trying to pump some oil in it. So I'll show you exactly how I do it. So now that my can is set up, I have to go ahead and loosen this opening. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I do not have a 7 millimeter wrench, but I do have an adjustable wrench which will work. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen it. It's all hooked up. I did tighten that C-clamp on because this hose is a little loose, just like I did there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start pumping it in. So it's a new day. Uh, the bleeding that I did yesterday did not work at all. As you can tell, there's still a little bit of a puddle from bleeding the, the slave cylinder out. But now I'm gonna go ahead and try and replace the master cylinder which is inside the cab. So we're gonna go ahead and completely take this off. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit. We're gonna take this pedal all the way off. There's three clips and then two bolts. And then we can get to the uh, clutch master cylinder. So that's what we're gonna do because the, the pedal is still dead. Like I can do this and sometimes it's super dead, watch. It's just, there's barely any pressure, so. That's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and take the master out, try and replace that. And then if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna get the slave cylinder tomorrow because they didn't have it in stock. So we went ahead and order one just in case. All right, so first things first to get this metal crash panel off. There's three 10 millimeter bolts. Now we have ease access to the clutch. And I'll show you where those clips are and the bolts. So hopefully you guys can see, I got this drill light here to show you. There's three clips. There's one right there where the, uh, it's right there. There's that one. And then there's two right up top. Hopefully you can see them. They're right here. Right up there. So, need a little trick. Uh, get some kind of small screwdriver and on this side, where that hole is you stick it through it and you pull pull out and it should come right out 
All right, so hopefully you guys can see this one a little better. There's a clip right there. I'm gonna try and set the phone down so you can still see. You have to get under it. Right there. You pull out and push up, just like that. And just push it right out. That's how you get them off. So there's one more in the back and then we should be able to get to the bolts. This is what holds the master cylinder in. This pin right here, you have to push it out. And in order to do that, you have to move the clutch towards the left this way, if you're looking at it dead on. And that's after you remove these two bolts. This is the further back one. It has a nut on the back. And this is the one in the front. I actually did not have to use a second wrench to get this off. It kind of, I guess it was like corroded on there or something and it just fell right out as soon as I was loosening this. So it worked out pretty good. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and remove this master. It really doesn't look bad. The boot does look a little torn. So hopefully this is the issue. The, it's torn right up here a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and I'll show you how to do that. So John's removing the actual master clutch. We went ahead and took the main line off after the main blue line that runs connects to here after I emptied the reservoir. It is sitting right over here. And that's so we wouldn't break this flimsy clip. It's a pretty cheap clip, but now I'm going to put this on the master and hook it back up after he takes out the old one. And what he's doing with the old one is he's pulling it inside the cab just enough to show that uh, hydraulic line that goes down to the slave cylinder. And he's gonna clamp that slave cylinder with the uh, vice grips just so it stays inside the cab. So whenever we put the new one on, it's an easy click, go, and then put back together. All right, old master versus new. There's a little difference. You technically don't need this black plastic piece. I went ahead and put it over anyways. There's actually a sealed o-ring they put have in here to push the hard line through and then it clicks through and it won't come out so here's the old one the boot was ripped anyways so i'm hoping that was the issue we'll find out but this one feels a lot smoother and now we're going to go ahead and reinstall it the only thing we had to do was there's a hard line on the inside of the firewall you have to pull this through and there's a clip so I'll show you the hard line. We used vice grips so it would not fall back through the firewall. And now it should be pretty simple. We should have to just slide that through and it should clip in itself. And we're also gonna replace the O-ring that was on the hard line. This was the old one. It wasn't bad, but they gave us a new one so we might as well replace it. And we're gonna go ahead and install it. And I'm gonna show you the uh, hard line real quick. Here's the hard line. There's a little light, sorry, but there's the hard line. We have vice grips on it, so it wouldn't show, uh, fall out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and slide it on. You do have to remove this clip here that was on the uh, master cylinder. It slides right into there. So we're gonna slide it on and then put this back through here. And there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and feed this blue tube back through the top hole. So we just fed that line back through. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. There we go. She's sitting in there all pretty. I'll go ahead and bolt her up here in a minute and put the pedal back on. All right, so it took us a little while. Get everything back. The spring's in. The spring is in right there. It seats like kind of awkward up in there, but it's in there. There's two bolts. They're kind of really hard to get to. That's why I didn't really film it that much, but it's same as uninstalling it. And now we gotta put the clips back on. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and bleed it and take it from there so the clips are all back in gonna go ahead and refill the reservoir now we're gonna go ahead and bleed the master cylinder john's gonna hit the clutch five times then keep it in while i open the bleed valve underneath all right everybody so today is a new day uh i didn't film this at all but i just got done doing a lot of work the uh 
clutch is fully in now. Let me get my phone light out. So the new clutch is fully in. It's right back there. The uh, there were some complications. So what happened was uh, all the methods. The first methods that you saw me do in this video was using the. Uh, I tried using a oil pump from the bottom and open up the bleeder valve and pump oil up. Well, that didn't work at all. It kept leaking on me. I even tried using hose clamps on it. It still kept leaking on me. So I junked that method and just said screw it and went ahead and bought a new clutch master cylinder and a new slave cylinder. Installed both of those. Thought it was going to work great up until uh, we blood everything. And then the clutch master cylinder decided to piss everywhere. Piss everywhere all over the inside of the car the boot was leaking so I called up AutoZone and said hey I need a replacement so they gave me a new replacement which came in today and today's Wednesday so I just uninstalled the old one swapped it out just installed the new one after I bench bled it and uh, it seems to work great now I bled the whole system again I slowly pumped the clutch about four times as the air was coming out of the reservoir and then uh, bled it from the bottom, just like I did earlier. And then uh, it seemed to work great. Now there's absolutely no play in it. It is so stiff. It is almost perfect, like a brand new clutch master cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and take it for a drive and make sure she shifts great and everything. But yeah, that's it was a long process just to change out this clutch master cylinder. And I'm re really hoping this one works. So I'm going to take it for a quick drive and then come back and then tell you what's going to go on next and the upcoming videos. So uh, let's take her for a spin real quick and test her out. So she seems to be running fantastic. The clutch is like new, just like I thought it would be from replacing it fully. So I don't know about you guys, but I am super excited to start doing some test drifts. So what's upcoming is I have a short shifter to install. We have all new brakes to install. I have to do an oil change. I have to flush the uh, coolant out and then put some new ones back in. And after that, we should almost be ready to do some test trips, like to know that she's a more reliable car than what she was because she was sitting for so long. So that's what's going to happen soon. Uh, today's Wednesday, so I'm hoping to have this video uploaded soon. And then uh, go ahead and immediately do the short shifter and oil change probably in one day, but I may do those in two separate days because I'm going to also do a video on removing the sound ender that's back there. I started removing some of the top just to see how hard it is, but I may try the dry ice method. It works a little better than just using a spatula. It took me like 30 minutes to just get half the back end done, not including the floor panels. So, but yeah, that's, uh, I'm excited to do some test runs and then some events coming up. So most of the events around here aren't until August, 
Most of them win already, but some of the upcoming ones won't happen until the middle or end of August. There's two events in August that I know of, possibly three. So I'm super stoked and uh, hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next, if any other mods you can think of. I know I want to do a hydro eventually and a quick release steering wheel. But for the time being, uh, I may go coilovers next, but I'm debating on what's, what brand coilovers. I kind of want to do BC because I've had BC on the daily before, before I went to air ride. So, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going to go on. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.